Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. We're live. Well, as you guys are probably well aware, yesterday, number three, yesterday, <laughs> sorry, anyhow, we got a new guy here, we got phone calls coming, it's busy, it's Saturday, and uh, we're just, as you guys are all aware, yesterday was Valentine's Day, and myself along with Let's get the volume down in the background or just mute the volume in the top left of the key. Not that one on the keyboard. Anyhow, a little bit of distractions in the back today. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. Anyhow. We'll start that again. There you are. Anyhow. You're there now. I'm glad that the cameraman spotted that prior to us going through the whole entire show with a frozen camera. Anyhow, as you all know, yesterday was Valentine's Day, and there was no hope in hell. The boys were going to be down here tying on the vice while our wives were at home making dinner, if you know what I'm saying. So, the boys are all out doing tours today I'm in a shop with uh, my brother Sheridan Knowles and uh, I whipped up something real quick because in the name of Friday Night Flies even though yesterday was Valentine's Day the show must go on and I got a doozy for you guys today um, I'm not sure if this flies ever been made before but I kind of feel good about being possibly one of the first to ever create it um, what we're gonna call this one is the salmon fry clouser and what it does is it takes um your traditional clouser which rides this direction if you guys are are we on camera three still it's got both going. okay so you guys can see what i'm doing and talking about so your clouser typically rides this way but it's usually deer hair and what will happen is you got a darker bucktail on top and a lighter bucktail on the bottom being that fish are used dark on the top lighter on the bottom but with salmon fry, they've got a lot of bars that go down the middle of the body. And I got this lovely grizzly hackle from White River. So I believe it was Bass Pro back in the day when our uh, fellow tire, Zach Copeland, was working at Bass Pro. My, as uh, maybe some of you might know, my birthday is coming up here on the hey. 17th. How are you? Good, thanks. We're actually live right now. I was, so, what? Here, you want to help him yeah. out? And, so anyhow, we, um, we're live here it's Saturday night, or Saturday night in Pemberton, and we got people coming in off the store, or off the floor. Anyhow, so my birthday, like I'm getting to, is coming up here on the 17th, and he sent me this saddle, and we were talking about birthday presents, and talking about what I need for the upcoming birthday. So if there's anything out there you guys want to send me, uh, you can send it here to the shop. I'd gladly tie flies with it if you've got some funky feathers or fly time materials or new threads or bobbins that you want me to try out. Send them down here to 1380 Birch Street in lovely Pemberton, BC, and I will showcase it. Either way, so this was last, last year's birthday, and we're going to put this to work on this Salmon Fry Clouser. There's always got to be something going on when it's my turn to tie, doesn't it? So anyhow, let's go down to camera four. We'll give this little salmon fry pattern a little roll, and then we're going to get right to business with it. So as you can see, traditional clouser has none of the dubbing heads. It doesn't have the grizzly hackle in the back to give it that barredness that a salmon fry has. It's relatively easy to do, and I mean, why not? just up the ante and makes it a, make it a whole lot sexier so I mean with the dubbing loop I wasn't spending a whole bunch of time filling in the holes in between the whole thing was is just to give it a little bit different profile in the water a little bit of sparkle a little bit of bedazzle just like my scissors that I got here from RCT a little bedazzle so 
I would tie these with a black head. You could go with like a dark green, an olive head, a red head. I mean, I think you're going to see here in the new fut in the near future, you're going to see the guides and fellow tires here on Friday Night Flies do their kick on the salmon fry clouser. So anyhow, let's get busy and we'll tie this guy. It's a pretty pretty simple tie, as everyone knows that clousers are pretty simple to tie. So we're going to take that out of the vise. We're going to drop. So these hooks that I'm using, you want to run a straight-eyed hook, right? So I've got a bunch of these that Mustad sent us back in the day when they were sent us a ton of hooks. So this is a C52S. It's a bucktail hook or also known as a stinger hook. So we'll put that up right in the vise. And nice and square, nice and level. So there you got it. So nice and square on the vise. Looks yeah. good, cameraman. Yeah. All right. So we're going to start by putting a little bit of thread down on the shank of the hook. We're not going to get too crazy about covering the whole shank. We're just going to put a little bit of grit down there for the materials to adhere to. At that point, cut off your tailing thread. We're going to take a little chunk of crystal flash. So in Crystal Flash, pretty straightforward. It's you don't want to get too crazy with the stuff because it can overpower your fly. We're gonna lay this onto the shank right up to about where the where the dumbbell eyes are gonna go. So the simple way to measure where your eyeballs go on a clouser is typically from the point of your hook to the back of your eyelid on the hook. You split it in half, and that's usually where your eyes are going to go. So we'll just lay this stuff in about halfway, and then it'll give us something to snug up against. Bingo, bango, and we're going to cut it off at about an inch, inch and a half off the back of the hook. And we're going to match our bucktails up to that as well. So at this point, now we're going to go to our dumbbell eyes. I went with heavy dumbbell eyes because where we're going to be fishing this is going to be fairly fast streams in the Pacific Northwest, typically Squamish, Lillooet, Pemberton, and some of the streams in Whistler. So what we have here is Wapsies lead eyes. They're painted dumbbell in a white or a pearl in a size large. We're going to put this on the upside of the hook. And like I said earlier, we're going to place it at the 50% between the hook point and at that point actually I've got a little bit forward so I'll take a little bit of that off and we'll do it right okay so you want to start with your thread and everything in the right spot so 50 50 right there and all you're gonna do is just do a figure eight on the eyelet 50 50 figure eights a little bit behind a little bit in front and make sure that these guys are square to the shank because you don't want it riding sideways so you're probably looking at this thinking that they're pretty big dumbbell eyes for this small hook but it's a size four and we want it to get down to the bottom in a hurry and you want it to look as crippled as possible when it comes to a salmon fry so that other fish see that it looks crippled and it's an easy meal and then what we're going to do is lock that head into place with some bone dry onto the threads roll it over to the underside make sure you coat those threads so that it secures that dumbbell eye and then That's all it takes. Now that is secure on top. Now we're gonna to get to the next phase, which is starting to add some bucktail. So I've got a natural bucktail, pretty straightforward. You can see I use bucktail a lot. I just had this, I've only had this for a couple weeks. So now you usually wanna take from, I'd say middle of the bucktail to the tip is finer. And you'll find that the stuff from the, to the top half 
toward its anchor like at the tail not the tip of the tail but the base of the tail is going to be shorter and more coarse you want the longer more limp stuff so as you can see I don't really use much of this stuff you could probably use that stuff in dry flies big dry flies popper stuff like that but I like to use this stuff from about midsection to the tip and as you can see that's what I've been doing so we're gonna take a chunk of that stuff and you don't want to go too too crazy on it so you take a chunk that is like if you take a popsicle stick I'm just gonna show you if you look at a popsicle stick it is roughly about the same size as a public popsicle stick okay if anything that's on the on the big side okay but by the time you pull all the fine fibers out and match up your tips grab it up three quarters pull all the stuff out of the back the loose short stuff and then instead of using a stacker what I like to do is go up to the tip and when you start seeing everything kind of pulling away that's a good time to lock it down and you see how we got pretty well all the tips at the same length instead of using a hair stacker hair stackers can be a little bit time consuming and this is a quick way of doing it so what we can do now is length of this you want to match your tips up with the crystal flash in the back nip all the stuff off in the front and when you're attaching bucktail on top of these big dumbbells it's a little tricky at first you kind of just snug it down and then get tight and that's pretty easy I mean you can make it what you want but that is probably about the easiest way I've found so far and then you go underneath the uh, the eyeballs and same thing around the back side nice and tight to the eyeballs and make sure everything's up on top at that point you're done on the top of the fly we're gonna roll this guy over with our rotary features of the mongoose the griffin mongoose and lock it down upside down so this is where it gets a little bit more interesting so you take that grizzly saddle or grizzly hackle that I got and you want to get two two feathers that are roughly the same size and you're going to tear them away from the, the hackle and you're going to see that there's a natural curve to feathers you want to have that curve facing facing the body of the feather or the fly and then what I found is that if you just take them together match them up with your tips tips together facing each other and you lay it in there get your length roughly the same and you want to just have a little bit of feather right to the eye and at that point you pull this guy back and you strip some of these fine feathers off the shaft of these hooks or off the feathers peeling some of that stuff back and then all I'm gonna do is cut those back ends off now that we've got them matched up I mean sometimes it's a little bit tougher than others to get these guys to lay proper sometimes they're gonna to want to twist on you but with what I've done here I find as long as you get the feather part on the side right up tight to the eye and you get these guys matched up good I find that they lay okay so there it is this is the hardest part is getting these guys to match up so at that point there we go loose at the front go back over around the back we got a little bit of noise in the and you'll see as long as you don't get too crazy following those feathers back you see how that worked and they're laying nice and straight for us that's the hardest part of this feather and or the this fly I'm saying feathers but it's it's a fly you want to make sure that you get a little bit of that feather right up in between and then you can take the tips of those grizzly hackles and cut them off so now go back up to the front on the underside and what we're going to do is we're going to finish this fly off with another chunk on the belly you're not going to get as much 
bucktail in there on this one. So a little bit less this time. But you want to match everything up, make it look pretty. So you get all that fuzz out. All the shorties are out of there. You don't need the bulk. And then go up to the tip, pull down until you get just a few. There we go. And then you got most of your tips. There's going to be the odd straggler, but you can see most of the tips are lined up here. Same thing, lay it down along the side, match up your lengths, which is perfect right there. Cut her off. Lay it up on top. This is a little tricky with the mongoose because it's got a about a 45 degree angle that you got to kind of get your finger in behind. Couple loose ones. And at that point, we're going to taper the head a little bit. It doesn't matter if it's laying off to the side. Once you get it off the vise, you can straighten them all up. Anchor it down. And you're going to clean that head up after once you're done with the uh, with the dubbing loop. So you bring that all back in behind. Make sure that it's all on top, looking pretty like it is. Small little dubbing loop. And bring it back up to the front. Throw your dubbing hook into the dubbing loop. I mean, once you've tied a few of these, you go, they go along pretty quick, pretty easy. I can't wait to tie a few of these in some different colors, to be honest with you. I think, I think a redhead would be nice. A deep olive. Anyhow, so we're going to stick with the pink. And with dubbing loops, I found that the Spirit River Lightning Dub really builds beautiful heads it picks out nice and it really blends as you can see like it's big it's fuzzy it's got long stringy fibers lots of gl glimmer to it it's really nice stuff um, i've also used uh, a fair amount of um what's the name of that other stuff that we use quite a bit uh i'm just trying to no it's uh the uh diamond dub sorry sorry for that usually it's right on the tip of my fingers but as soon as you got a camera in front of you you find sometimes you get a little tongue tied but yeah superfly's diamond dub is uh, pretty stringy as well it's a full synthetic so when you're pulling this stuff out you kind of want to spread it out a little bit with your fingers pack a little bit in there you don't need to go too too crazy and then once you've packed it with your fingers it makes a nice loose package that you can throw in between between the two threads of your dubbing loop and you want to try your best to somewhat center that in the dubbing loop and if you guys were following me close there you would have seen that I have my tongue sticking out again okay so we got all that good stuff in the middle it's time to lock it down and simply just spinning your thread is how you're gonna lock that down and before you get it too too crazy tight I always suggest have a little popsicle stick with a little bit of velcro on it and just pick some of those loose fibers out and try and get it bugged out again because the last thing you want to do is trap all those nice fibers that you're trying to uh, put on the head here which is pretty pretty awesome so you got all this nice bugged out lightning dub and that is the FL shrimp by lightning dub so we're going to use the rotary features of the vise, go in behind the head, up over the top, around the front, around the back, under the bottom, back under the bottom. I mean it's pretty straightforward stuff and as you're getting closer to the end, you can use your fingers a little bit to prune and preen to make sure that you're not trapping too much of those fibers. That's not what you want to do. You want to keep that nice flow the flow is important especially when when you're getting into these flowing flies streamers so we'll make sure that we got that dubbing loop locked down nicely at that point we'll cut away the excess and with your fingers simply pull back on the dubbing loop and let's make sure that that head is nicely anchored now you can taper it a little bit just a little bit to the head the hook at this point we're going to fire a little quick whip finish on there 
right at the head of the fly. Throw a second one on there just for good measures. I mean, you can get creative with different colors in thread as well. You can finish that off with a black thread or a red thread, green thread. And now that that's all locked down, we're going to take our little Velcro strip, pull a little bit of that loose stuff out, make sure that it's looking real pretty. Just like so. That's going to flow really nice in the water. And then, of course, we're going to make sure that we got that bottom chunk of bucktail in the right place now that it's in the center. And there you go. Clean up the head a little bit. So if you got a few of these little lightning dub fibers sticking out. Uh, myself, I like to lock these fibers down with a little bit of solar as bone dry. And that's pretty easy to do. You just take a little dab of this, put her up on those threads. And it gives a real nice finish. And it protects your threads. So if you're bashing bottom, you can keep this fly looking good for a long time. And it also adds a little bit of a, a hint of UV. You can see that lightning dub. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Pretty beautiful, simple tie. Add a few of them to your box for this spring when the uh, salmon flies start to emerge from the reds. And uh, I've got high hopes on this fly. I think we're going to use it for steelhead this year. We're going to use it for coastal cutthroat trout, rainbow trout, bull trout, dolly varden, any of the coastal species that are predatorial. We'll definitely want to make a quick meal of this this fly. So what we'll do is go back up to camera three. Okay, once again, uh, apologies uh, that we didn't have a show last night. But being that it was Valentine's Day, we all have wives at home that uh, needed our attention on Friday night. So we'll, we've attached a quick Valentine's Day special for you guys for this Saturday. And the recipe will be up on our website, FridayNightFlies.com. And if you guys are needing any of your fly tying advice or materials, swing on by 1380 Birch Street in downtown Pemberton, Spud Valley Sporting Goods. We've got a knowledgeable staff that would gladly help you pick a few, uh, few patterns out. And uh, it's that time of year. The rivers are starting to open up. We look forward to seeing you guys. Anyhow, we'll sign out with that. Enjoy the rest of your day.